Hi everyone, this is Ryan and uh, welcome to my weekly webinar. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, uh, welcome. Welcome to FX Starts here, where I'm going to share with you Forex knowledge. Right? Uh, it's going to be this webinar, weekly webinar, is going to be full of content. All right. So for those of you who are here the first time, once again, welcome. And for those of you who have been watching my webinars every week, thank you so much for your continued support. All right. Now, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, a very important topic. It's called uh, trading lot size. Basically, it's going, I'll be talking about money management and risk management. Um, there'll be no strategy today. Right? I'm not going to teach any strategy today, but I believe this is far more important than any strategy you can learn out there. All right? Because with a proper money management system, that is the only way we can be profitably consistently. All right? So I've been following this uh, money management system for my 12 years of trading. And this is the system that enabled me to make millions of dollars from trading Forex. All right, so I'm going to move on to today's topic, which is trading lot size. Okay. All right, so what is trading lot size, right? How to determine what lot size to trade. Now, trading lot size is a very important factor of risk management, right? The larger lots increase profits and losses per pip. At the same time, it also means, right, it means that you make more money, you can also lose more money per trade. All right, so it's a double edged sword. Yeah, doesn't mean you make more, means your, your losses are still the same. No, if you increase your lot size, that means that the cost per pip is higher. So you make more, you lose more as well. All right, so you have to be very careful about what lot size you are going to use. All right, so it is very, very important to maintain the same lot size every trade. Right. Normally, I'll recommend to my students to maintain the same lot size until you increase your, your, your trading account by about 20%. All right. So this means if you are trading with a $10,000 account, only when the account increases by 20%, which is uh, $12,000. Right? So when your account balance reaches $12,000 and above, that is when you can increase your lot size again. All right. Anything less than $12,000, you maintain the same lot size. The same goes for losses, right? If your account drops by 20% or more, that means from $10,000, you drop down to $8,000, then you lower your lot size accordingly as well. All right? Okay. So how do we uh, calculate or how do we get, how do we know what is our trading lot size? Right? There are four steps basically, right? The first one, you determine your risk. Secondly, you need to find your stop. Thirdly, calculate your pip cost. And fourth, your trade, you get your trade lot size. All right, so I'm going to touch on each, uh, each item here, right, in the next few slides. Okay, so the first one, determine your risk, right? Now, the, this first one is very, very important, right? Must, if, if you can't remember what I've taught you so far, or if you're going to forget everything I share with you tonight, this one you must remember, all right? Most successful traders risk 1% to 2% per trade, right? That's all. That's all, all right? Maximum 1% to 2% per trade. So what does this mean? This means that a losing trade will incur a loss of no more than 2% of the total account balance. Right. So if you have never traded before or you are a new trader, it is normally recommended that you start off with a 1% risk or less. All right. So how do we calculate our risk? Right. So let's say in this example here, if your risk is 1%, right? so we are trading, right? you must treat your trading like a business. Don't treat it like a game. Right? You play with your money, you're going to lose your money. All right, so treat it like a business. This has to be taken seriously, right? Very important. Uh, if you if you you need to remember this formula, right? So before you do before you place any trade, you need to calculate this. All right. So you do this a few times and it becomes second nature to you. All right. You'll be very familiar with it. All right. So if the risk is one percent, 
and your account balance is $10,000, then your maximum loss per trade is 1% or $10,000, which is $100, right? So your risk per trade is $100, right? So this means that every trade you place, right, the maximum you're going to lose is $100, right? This means you will have to lose 100 times in a row before you blow your whole account, all right? Before you blow your everything in, in your account, right? So that's not going to happen, right? I'm not going to share with you or teach you anything that was going to lose 100 times in a row. Don't worry, all right? Okay, next, we need to find your stop, right? So your stop price must always be decided, excuse me, your stop price must always be decided before you enter a trade, right? So what does this mean? Before you enter a trade, you must always know where are you going to exit with a loss, right? Where is your stop loss price, right? Is it 20 pips, 30 pips, right? So it can be a fixed number, it can be 20 pips, 30 pips, some people 15, some people 35, 50, these are popular numbers, all right? Or it can also be support and resistance, right? It can be pivots. It can be using Fibonacci levels, right? So different people have different ways of uh, identifying where their stop loss is going to be, right? For me, most of my techniques that I'm going to share with you or most of the techniques that I trade myself personally every day, my stop loss is 20 pips most of the time. All right, so whatever method you decide to, to, to determine your stop loss, right? You always need to count the pips from the entry price to the stop price. All right, so after counting, you know, the difference between entry price and stop price, then you know your stop loss, how many pips is it going to be? All right, so but for today, I'm going to use 20 pips because I trade 20 pips stop loss all the time, and that is what I'm going to share with all of you as well. All my techniques, majority of them are 20 pips stop losses. Okay, so next, number three, how do we calculate your pip cost? All right, pip cost. Okay, so assuming your stop is 20 pips, right? Assuming our stop is 20 pips, okay? All right, and then you have a starting balance of $10,000. Right. So using a 1% risk, right, this means that we are going to risk maximum $100 per trade. All right. And then our stop loss, our stop in pips is 20 pips. So we're going to take $100, divide by 20 pips. So we get pip cost equals $5. All right. So what does this mean? I'll explain to you in a short while. All right. So I'm going to show you a second example. Right, so in this second example here, so we're going to calculate our pip cost again, right? But this time, assuming our stop loss is 50 pips, right? 50 pips, all right? So same, we have a starting balance of $10,000. We are going to risk 1%, right? So 10,000 times 0 0.01. So we're going to risk $100 again, right? So our the dollars we are going to risk per trick never changes, right? It's always the same, okay? But if your stop loss is more right now, so instead of 20 pips, now it's 50 pips. Okay, it's 50 pips. So our pip cost is going to be $2, right? $2, all right? Okay. Next. So your trade lot size. So what lot size are we going to use for our trade? All right. So it, it depends, right, on your pip cost, as we, we have gone through already. It depends on your pip cost, right? So if you're trading one standard lot, one standard lot is equivalent to 100,000 units, all right? Uh, pip cost or pip value is $10 per pip, right? So when I place a trade of one standard lot, every pip is $10, right? So if I, if I make 20 pips, I make 20 times $10, $200. If I make 50 pips, 50 times 10, $500. If I make 100 pips, 100 times 10, $1,000. All right. So if you're trading one mini lot, right? One mini lot, this means it's 10,000 units. All right. So your pip value is $1. So every pip you make or, lot or lose, it's worth $1. So if you make 50 pips, $50 profit. If you lose 20 pips, $20 loss. All right, and then next we have one micro lot. So one micro lot is a thousand units. Each pip is worth 10 cents, all right, 10 cents. So if you make 50 pips, 
50 pips times 10 cents, that's uh, $5, all right? Okay, so by the way, these are all in uh, US dollars, all right? US dollars, okay, I know we're in Asia here. We don't use uh, peso, we don't use ringgit, we don't use baht, we don't use Singapore dollars, we don't use rupiah, we use US dollars when you are trading most of the time, all right? Okay, so moving on, right? So your trade lot size, right, is dependent on three things, right? The first one, risk per trade, we have already done that. Second, stop per trade, we have also done that. And third, finally, cost per pip, right? So you need to calculate your cost per pip. So using the above information, you can determine your lot size, all right? So if cost per pip is equal is equivalent to $10, right? So let's say after calculating your, 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 your account balance, divide by your risk, and then uh, divide by how many pips is your stop, you get $10, so you're going to trade one standard lot, all right? So if your cost per pip is $5, then you're going to trade five mini lot. All right, so these are based on $10,000 accounts, all right? So if let's say your account size is bigger, you calculate accordingly, right? So if your account size is $50,000, then you take $50,000 uh, times 1%, that's $500, right? So your risk is $500 per trade. What if you are trading with a smaller account? Maybe you're trading with a $5,000 account, right? Same thing, 1% of $5,000 is $50, right? So your maximum loss per trade should be no more than $50, all right? Okay, so now we're going to come to the exciting part again, all right? We'll come to the end of uh, today's uh, webinar, all right? So I'm going to, uh, how are we going to choose today's US $100 winner, right? So same thing as last week or what we are going to do every week from now, right? In the comments below, please indicate your level of Forex experience, right? So we get new students joining us every week for this webinar. So I want to know how many of you are experienced traders, how many of you are new traders or never traded before, all right? So you have never traded anything before, please indicate a one. If you have traded before, but not Forex, right? You can be stocks, options, futures, gold, oil, right? Uh, index, right? Please put two. If you have traded Forex for less than three months, please put three. If you have traded Forex for less than one year, please put four. And you have traded for more than one year, please put five. All right. Now I noticed in the previous uh, video, right, last week's webinar, some of you put in the number. Right. For example, in my case, I'm an experienced trader. I've been trading for 12 years. Right. So I'm going to put five. And then remember to leave a space. All right, leave a space here. All right, leave a space here and then put leave a space here and then put hashtag FX starts here. Starts has an S over there. All right, some of you spelled it wrongly as well. All right, so it's your number space hashtag FX S T A R T S H E R E. All right, so for me, five space. Hashtag FX starts here. If you have never traded before, then please put one space hashtag FX starts here. All right. Now, the reason why I'm asking you guys to, to, to share with me this information is because I want to I want I want my webinars to be uh, useful to you guys. All right. I don't want you to tune in every week and then find that it's a waste of time. Right. That means I'm teaching something which is irrelevant to you. Right. Maybe all of you are new traders and then I teach you strategies every week, but you don't even know how to trade. So there's no point. All right. So as at the same time, uh, last week I also announced to, to that uh, I'm also coming out with a very basic uh, um, Forex training series. Right, so I'm in the middle of that right now. It's going to be done soon. So once that's done, I'll give all of you access to it. It's going to be free. Don't worry. I'm not going to make you pay any money for my for my forex training. All right. Okay. So uh, have a good weekend. All right. And remember to follow this uh, money management system. Right. Trade your your trading lot size is very very important. I want to emphasize again. Right. This is probably more important than any strategy you are going to learn all right so keep this in mind right very very important all right and then uh, leave your comments below 
I'm going to pick the winner, right? So now it's Thursday, 9 p.m., right? I'm going to give you until tomorrow, Friday, 12 noon, right? So we have about 12, 13, 14, about 14 to 15 hours, right? For you to watch this video and comment below. And then uh, I'll pick a winner at 12 noon tomorrow. All right, so if you want to find out if you have won, please tune in tomorrow. It's going to be a Facebook Live, right? So I'm going to be live on Facebook, right? I'll announce the winner at 12 noon tomorrow, all right? So, uh, oh yeah, one more thing I forgot. Um, tomorrow is the first Friday of the month, right? First Friday of the month. So normally on the first Friday of the month, there is this very, very important news announcement called the U.S non-farm payroll right it's going to happen in the evening right um for singapore time it's going to be happen it's going to be happening around uh, 9 to 10 p.m so i would normally advise students or normally advise traders not to trade during that time all right in fact for me personally most of the time on fridays i'm done in the afternoon right so that means afternoon before dinner I stopped trading already, all right? So another reason is also because Friday night, most of the markets are closed. The only markets left open are probably the US markets, right? The European markets are gonna be closed. Asian markets have closed, right? The US market is the only market open. So the volume is gonna be smaller, right? Volume is gonna be smaller. So there'll be lesser liquidity, all right? Smaller movements as well, right? So I normally avoid trading on Friday nights, right? every Friday night, it's not just the first Friday, all right? But the U.S. non-farm payroll is the first Friday of every month, so that is a very important news announcement, and prices are crazy during that time, right? It can move 100 pips in five minutes, all right? So you don't want to be caught in that, all right? Okay, so avoid trading on the first Friday of every month or every Friday night if possible, all right? So normally every Friday after dinner, I stop trading. I, I, I exit all my positions and I stop. All right. So that's all for tonight. Right. Remember to comment below. I'll pick the winner tomorrow at 12 noon. All right. So finally, good luck in your trading journey. Right. Good luck in your trading journey. And I wish all of you consistent profits day after day, week after week and month after month. All right. Goodbye.